power. They say corrupt and absolute power corrupt. Absolutely. Who regulates the regulators? It's no longer news that since the Department of Petroleum Resources, DPRO, a body whose statutory responsibility was ensuring compliance to petroleum laws, regulation and guideline in the oil and gas industry, was collapsed into the upstream regulatory body, things have not been well with that industry. Apart from the confusion experienced by industry players as a result of the duplication of the regulatory functions of the authority and commission, also in an era when the government is running low on foreign earnings and our foreign reserve is depleting by the day, a regulatory commission that ought to be revenue generating rather than meet the revenue target is spending huge funds hiring consultants to do the job of trained staffs. Why the trained staffs are left redundant? Anyway, in Nigeria we then our consultants in a better way to chop money for Nigeria. EFCC over to you. I don't know why we are this wasteful. The same DPRO that had hit to exceeded its target even during COVID lo lockdown can barely meet targets now and nobody's asking questions. If we know if it gets little things like putting round pegs and round holes in our regulatory system, right, how we want to get politics right? The Oronsai Committee that did a detailed audit of the government parastatals had recommended the collapsing of the petroleum industry regulator into one regulatory body, like collapsing the PPRO and, and PEF into DPRO, and allow a seasoned regulator to head the same, which was what actually ordinarily excited industry watch about the PIA, as it would have saved costs. But unfortunately, here in Nigeria, implementation of report is a big problem. So the same government that is taunting the toga of scaling down of government on government expenditure has rather created multiple inefficient regulators out of a single efficient one with increased management layer and it attended increase in wages and costs because vehicles will be bought, offices will be created, salaries will be paid. Yet, the only focus of the same management is hiring consultants to do the job of trained staffs. Hence, the only visible achievement one can see now is that the overrunning of the default industry regulator as expected is taking turn for the worse as operators and implementation of mandate is near comatose and giving way for intimidation, harassment, inefficiency, psychophancy, and mediocrity. That's the Nigerian spirit. Why would, if I may ask, why would the APC government be interested in nominating, always nominating retired hands and nominating a retired and this sensitive regulatory body? What is the attraction? I had thought that such appointment would be guarded by the provisions of the Enabling Act. I be that they look for who they go control. Why the staffs are complaining of redundancy and willing to ventilate their frustration, as you know, for fear of intimidation and sack. You know, say work no day now. It was also alleged that the management was given a backdoor presidential approval to employ up to 50 persons. Even though this job is not stated in their website because if you go there, there's nothing. They are not employing. The allegation that some persons have been given appointment letters even without going through any form of uh, interview or test to show competence. And trust me, this is Nigeria now. That list now, government officials, children, politicians, personal friends, children, and a few persons from their constituency. Now go food there. One would have expected the union to be vociferous against this act in protection of their members when they pay checkup dues. But apart from ultimatum issued, we expired and nothing happened. Nobody heard anything from them again. No. Even rumors arrived that their beautiful office, that edifice in Kofu Abayomi in Lagos, will soon be stole, sold as most of the staffs have been moved to Abuja in a rented, unbefitting office. You know, government are wasted, shall I never see. One would also have expected the industry players to complain. But why would they complain when the union members are not complaining? Anyway, who complains in Nigeria where they are benefiting from a chaotic system? Since DPR is no longer regulatory, a lot of them are having a free day. So they'll just keep quiet. And Nigeria will do. I will therefore advocate that for as long as we continue to use inexperienced and retired hand to manage our regulatory commissions, while leaving out the young, energetic, trained, and experienced hand to become redundant, we'll continue to experience the JAPA phenomenon. And soon, our best hands will be all over the world but here. It's already happening in various sectors. 
also as bad as some aspect of the Petroleum Industry Act is, we still can make the best of it. If we stick to the spirit and the letters of the law, in implementing sin, this man, no man attitude in all of the name, in all, in all name of consultancy, will not only destroy our remaining existing industry, but send our best hands away. I don't talk my own. That's our package for today. For more episodes, simply follow us on all our social media platforms showing on your screen. And I have promised as Advocate General of the Federation, I will endeavor to bring you up to speed with happenings in the petroleum industry until things are done right there. Nigeria can never be better if we all are quizzed in the face of ineptitude. See you next week.